all the new customization options and features added to the iPhone with iOS 18, it's easier than ever to set up your iPhone the exact way you want it and ensure it best fits your needs. In today's video, I'm gonna go over how I've set up my lock screen, control center, widgets menu, and the home screen itself. My goal with customization and a theme you'll notice throughout this guide is that I always strive to have high functionality and little to no redundancy while maintaining a clean and minimal aesthetic. All right, let's get started. To customize your lock screen, long press the middle of your lock screen and it will open the customization menu where you can choose between your different lock screens or create a new one from scratch. Click customize at the bottom and then lock screen. This will initiate all the options you have to customize your lock screen. I like to start by choosing the rounded corner clock font option and making it rather thin. I find this looks the cleanest, but pick whichever you like best. Next, I tend to set the top widget to the sunrise and sunset option. I love knowing what time the sun rises and sets, as this changes fairly drastically throughout the year in Canada. For the widgets under the time, I like to have the battery widget to have at a glance info of the remaining battery level of my connected accessories, such as my AirPods or maybe a Bluetooth speaker. I also like to have the conditions widget for quick current temperature info without having to unlock my iPhone. Next, we have the long press options at the bottom. For the left button, I like to leave this as the flashlight as this is the way I'm most used to turning on the flashlight without having to unlock my iPhone. The right button, I like the changes from the camera as you can easily just swipe to the left to quickly access the camera as I mentioned in my previous iPhone tips and tricks video. I'll leave a link in the description if you haven't checked out that video yet. This is an example of removing redundancy. In my opinion, there's never a need to have two ways to do the exact same function. So you might as well put this button to use for something else. In this case, I've chosen to make it toggle my LifeX smart bulb on and off in my bedroom as I love to be able to quickly turn off my lamp before bed. With the iOS 18 update, we now have the ability to completely customize the control center, which is a very welcome capability in my books. But if left stock, there's certain elements I find rather redundant and cumbersome. We're going to completely rebuild the control center from the ground up so you guys can see exactly how to customize it to fit your needs. First, hit the little plus sign at the top left corner. This will put your control center into edit mode. Next, I'm gonna hit the little minus sign on everything so that we can start fresh with a clean slate. You'll probably notice on your control center you have a second and third page when you scroll down. This is an example of an addition to iOS 18 that I personally don't like. I borrowed my girlfriend's phone to show you that you can completely delete these pages and just be left with the clean traditional control center on a single page. To add controls, simply press add a control at the bottom. First, let's start with connectivity controls. On your control center, you probably currently have this menu for your connectivity controls. Personally, I don't like using in this menu because it doesn't allow you to quickly long press the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi buttons, which is a feature I use all the time. You have to first open the menu, then you can long press them, which in my opinion just adds more time to that functionality for no reason. I prefer to set mine up to individually take up those four spaces with airplane mode, cellular, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. If you're having trouble finding the controls I mentioned, you can easily just search for what you're looking for at the top and it will pop right up. Over to the right of that, I have the small now playing widget. In my opinion, now playing doesn't need to be any bigger than this, but you can resize it to your liking. Under the connectivity options, I'd like to have orientation lock, silent mode, and then the focus modes underneath those. To the right of those, you gotta have the classic brightness and volume sliders, of course. Now this leaves the bottom eight slots for the functions that you feel would be the most beneficial for you. Personally, I like to have the camera, flashlight, calculator, timer, low power mode, screen recording, background sounds, and a shortcut that opens YouTube studio so I can easily check and see if you guys are enjoying the content. Speaking of that, like and subscribe if you're enjoying the video so far. You may have noticed I've shifted everything down to the bottom of my control center. This is simply so that it's all easily reachable with one-handed use since I have a Pro Max model. But if you'd like, you can fill every space with as many functions as you see fit. I like to keep my home screen as clean as possible. Therefore, if there's widgets I use here and there but aren't crucial to my day to day, they live over to the left within the widget menu. To edit your widget menu, long press any widget and then click edit home screen. This will turn on wiggle mode and you'll now see the edit button at the top left. Again, I will remove everything so that we can build it from scratch together. To remove existing widgets, just hit the little minus at the top left and then click remove. To add new widgets, long press the screen until you see the edit button pop up in the top left. Now click edit 
and then add a widget. First up, I love to keep the large Google News widget front and center so I can easily just swipe over and get a quick preview of the headlines of the day. Next, I like to keep the Medium Reminders widget here so that I know what reminders are coming up and also can easily open the Reminders app to add new ones if need be. Under that, I have the Medium Battery widget, which allows me to see current battery info for up to four devices. I only typically have around three to four other devices connected, so this is the perfect size and provides at a glance info about my other device's current battery life. And finally, I have the large screen time widget at the bottom. I love the screen time tracking service on iOS, and I try to keep my screen time as low as possible. This allows me to see if I'm well below my ideal maximum for the day, or if I'm on my device way too much and should probably go touch grass. The home screen. This is the place on my iPhone that I put the absolute most thought into. It means a lot to me to ensure my home screen is highly functional, has little to no redundancy, and has as clean and minimal aesthetic as possible. Something you may notice on your phone is that there's a little search button at the bottom of your home screen. All this button does is open up the spotlight search, which you can already do just by swiping down anywhere on your home screen. This is another example of redundancy. To remove the search button, simply go to your settings, then home screen and app library. And then at the bottom, you'll see a toggle for show on home screen. Just turn that off and the search button will be gone off your home screen. With iOS 18, they finally added the ability to place app icons wherever you'd like without them snapping to the top. This has allowed me to create this nice C-shape pattern with the widget in the middle. I love the aesthetic of this layout. I only have app icons on my home screen that I use very often. And then I just keep all other apps sitting in the app library over to the right and search for them as I need them. You can also just as easily swipe down anywhere on the screen and start searching for the app you need at any time via the spotlight search. I love that iOS 18 added the ability to apply dark mode to your app icons. This creates a clean, dark aesthetic that I really like. To turn on dark mode for your icons, long press any area on your home screen where there's empty space. You'll see the edit button appear at the top left. Click edit, then customize. This will open the customization options at the bottom, allowing you to choose between light or dark app icons. Also new with iOS 18 is the ability to remove the labels from your icons, just like we've had on Android for roughly a decade now. Only downside to this on iOS is that the only way to remove the labels is to select the large option. Personally, I don't love that I have to have my icons this big in order to remove the labels, but it's a trade-off I'm willing to deal with for now until Apple hopefully adds a separate option to remove the labels while maintaining the smaller size. It's totally up to you which apps you feel deserve a spot on your dock. For me, the phone, iMessage, browser, and Spotify take the highest priority as these are apps I use more than any other on my iPhone. And last but not least, we have the widget stack. This feature is so clutch and something I really, really love about iOS. The fact I can stack multiple widgets into a scrollable stack scratches that itch I have for functionality and minimalism. You can have as many of the same size widgets in a stack and easily scroll between them while only taking up the space of a single widget on your home screen. This is just mwah. Chef's kiss. I'll delete mine to show you how to set this up. Long press the empty space on your home screen, hit edit, then add widget. Pick any widget you'd like. For me, I use the small size widget as they fit best for the layout that I've created. Once you have your first widget on the home screen, all you have to do is pick another widget of the same size and drag it onto the first widget that you chose. You'll now see the two little dots beside it, indicating that you've created a widget stack. You can now long press the stack and select edit stack. This will allow you to add as many widgets to the stack as you'd like. The days of iOS being completely uncustomizable are seemingly over. With these additions to iOS 18, it seems that Apple's been listening to consumers' desires for making their iPhone experience more personalized. I really hope Apple continues to lean in this direction for iOS 19 this fall. Have fun making your iPhone feel brand new. And until next week, this has been Nicknology signing off.